Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Denali-25. Our last episode featured Grish and Yolanda Twoblades finding an unusual occurrence while on guard duty in the Northern Plains. A strange glowing orb had led them away from the party's camp to the body of what they believed to be the missing quarry they'd been searching for. We begin this podcast with the morning sun shining and the group encircled around the corpse. Brother Stance broke the silence first. The clothing is certainly the same as the brigands. And the shoes don't show much wear except where a stirrup would rub as well. No coin purse, and the bludgeoning damage would certainly point to this being an unfortunate waylaid by the bugbears. Great! What do we do now? exclaimed Phidias the gnome. We are literally back to square one, he continued. The group looked at each other, puzzled as to their next course of action, until Sir Omel spoke. Let's fan out and see if there are any other clues. We don't have many other choices at this point. Each member of the group went out in different directions, and at the 100-yard mark, Harris yelled back to his comrades, which all came running. As the group reached the mage, he pointed down to a small ditch with fetid water. Horse bones, he exclaimed. A quick inspection of the items showed that only half of the horse had been at this location and the remains had been picked clean. Here too, yelled out Yolanda a few feet away. I have a blood trail. The adventurers followed the trail for nearly 300 feet when the trail abruptly stopped, but crushed plains grass continued north. With all members circled around, they evaluated the discovery. Grish recapped what they knew. The probable bandit and his probable mount were waylaid in this location by a probable bugbear attack. The missing heart was probably taken by whatever took the probable other half of the horse and went north. From the looks of it, the tracks, it was a large group or a large creature. Is that what we are probably looking at? His tone indicated that he was not a fan of the information presently available. Brother Stance the Verte Order cleared his throat. <clears throat> yes, that is the probable state of the information. Unless you have some other divine knowledge, that is all we have. Grish looked down, noting that his attitude had not been well received and apologized. Sir Omel added, No need to be sorry. I'm sure none of us like the present state of affairs. I would concur with the monk, though. I think we have to continue north in the mere hopes of recovering this golem heart. The thief, I presume, is no longer an issue. Yolanda piped up, adding that the group may be facing another swarm of bugbears or something possibly worse. Adding that the Northlands are filled with criminals and other nasties did not raise anyone's spirits. I'm tired of walking, interjected Phidias. Let's go get the horses and go north. It's not like we are having anywhere else to go at this point. We are in the middle of nowhere. After an hour of riding, Harris began to speak with Yolanda. I think we are going after a singular creature. Have you noticed the trampled grass has stayed fairly consistent? Nodding, she affirmed his suspicions. Anything that large should be fairly easy to spot, but I see nothing on the horizon except for the mountains that should mark the edge of land. The rise in the ground was hard to miss as the group moved closer to the coastal mountains. As lunch came and went, the party found themselves within sight of the foothills and noticed a strange rock formation. Dismounting, the adventurers noticed the high grasses ended a short distance away as the shale-covered hills lay before them. In hushed tones, the heroes attempted to determine what they were looking at with multiple different guesses. Grish looked around and noted that Phidias was missing. Where did the gnome go? He blurted out in a raspy voice. 
The others looked around from their concealed positions, but shrugged their shoulders in ignorance. In a louder voice, Sir Omel began, Son of a... But his words trailed off as the others followed his gaze. He began to point, and everyone spotted the nimble rogue zipping along open ground to look at the strange structure. Omel began to rise, but was held by Harris the Mage. Just give him a second. As the party watched from the edge of the grass, they saw the diminutive Rome gnome try to peek through the gaps of the strange structure. Phidias turned back towards the group and, using hand motions, indicated that a very tall creature with an eye in the middle of his head was behind the wall. The eye-hand gestures were not readily identified, and the group bickered as they attempted to figure out the strange hand signals. The arguing stopped when Brother Stance yelled out, Crap! and jumped up, running at full speed towards the gnome. Taken aback, the group was stunned a few moments, then realized what the monk had seen. Coming around the opposite side of this construction was a two-headed Etten that Phidias had not yet noticed. The monk was running at top speed and began to yell at the gnome to warn him. The Etten, hearing the yelling, diverted its attention to the monk and moved in that direction. Phidias, spotting the Etten, pressed himself against the construction, hoping to blend into the stonework. In doing so, he did not realize that the Cyclops had heard the disturbance and was coming around the corner where Phidias had previously been. The rest of the group jumped to their feet and began to sprint towards the giants. Harris began to arm himself with magic missile spells, but realized he was still out of range. A loud roar was heard from the Cyclops as it spotted Phidias and swung its club at the gnome. Brother Stance yelled the warning just in time as the rogue did a roll underneath the half tree trunk that was being used as a club. The blast struck the side of the stone tower, knocking loose several stones from the top. One landed just behind Phidias, but then began to roll towards him, causing the gnome to jump to his feet and try and sprint away from it. Another stone struck the cyclops on the top of the head, opening up a gash on the creature. Brother Stance continued to charge, but saw the Etten swing two weapons at him. Leaping into mid-air, the monk tucked his legs and narrowly avoided being struck by the weapons. His dodge sent him under the Etten and crashing into the side of the tower, where he went limp against the stones. The rest of the group observed the slicing moves and thought Stance had been killed. Omel and Yolanda went after the Etten as Grish grabbed Phidias out of the path of the rolling stone and back towards the Cyclops. As the uneven pair engaged, a series of magic missiles added more blood to the open wound of the Cyclops. The Etten leaped towards the pair of fighters and closed the distance, smashing its weapons into both of them. Yolanda was briefly knocked sideways, but Omel's heavy armor absorbed most of the impact, although it was noticeably dented. Yolanda Two Blades quickly leapt to her feet and moved to one side of the creature as Omel went to the opposite side. The three continued to exchange blows amongst themselves, with injuries adding up quickly. Grish and Phidias each took turns attacking the Cyclops, whose aim was off due to the blood dripping into its eye. The wild attacks came close to hitting the pair, but never effectively landed. After several minutes, the beating proved too much for the Cyclops, who fell against the tower and slid downwards towards the cliff, towards the still unmoving monk. After a flurry of blows by Yolanda and Sir Omel, the Etten had a dark cloud appear over his shoulders, causing a great deal of distortion to the creature's visual ability. The Knight of Bacchus moved to the same side as Yolanda, and the two fighters did enough damage to break the creature's leg, causing it to topple over, missing a concentrating Harris, the mage. As he dove out of the way, the cloud of dark fog dissipated from the Etten's head. With both foes down, Grish and Phidias climbed atop the body of the Cyclops to check on their friend. The gnome arrived first and frantically looked around. Grish was not as nimble and called up, yelling, Can you see him? Can you see him? The rogue scanned and located the monk, yelling that he had found him, adding that he was not crushed, but he wasn't moving either. 
Hommel gave cautionary throat cuts to both adversaries who were down as the rest of the party attempted to extricate the member of the Verte order. After several frantic minutes, the limp body of the monk was brought to solid ground. The monk's pale face and twisted body deeply concerned his associates. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.